Hello, everyone, and welcome to the February Virtual STEM Night event. My name is Regina Price, and I'm the chair of the Mathematics and Engineering Department here at the College of the Albemarle. And I'm Todd Kruger, and I'm the chair of the Natural Sciences Department here at the College of the Albemarle. And tonight's STEM event is Cupid's Arrow. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Excellent. Cupid's Arrow, the perfect example of physics, if you know a little bit about energies. So if you've been with us for a while, you may remember some of these terms that I'm going to show you here on my computer. In order to make this month's activity work, we need to talk a little bit about the different types of energy. For example, kinetic energy. This is the energy you have when you're moving. If you're running really fast or if you're moving really fast, that's the kind of energy that we could use to create other types of energy. For example, here's another type of energy called potential energy. If I'm not moving, I could maybe store up energy somewhere. For example, in a battery. Right? If you want your electronics to work, you're going to have to put a, a battery in them to give them this stored up potential energy and make something happen. Uh, springs. There's another example of potential energy. Right? This isn't moving right now, but I can feel a lot of tension trying to pull my hands back together. As I stretch this and move with kinetic energy, I feel the energy stored in the spring, that's what we call potential energy, trying to pull my hands back together. The more I move this out of position, the harder it moves back. So that's a way of converting kinetic energy into a stored up potential energy. There are other kinds of energy though. Thermal energy, for example. If I have a source of heat, like a campfire here, that's a good source of energy. You can heat something up. Can you think of a good way to turn kinetic energy moving into thermal energy, heat? I bet if you've ever gone outside in the cold winter, and your fingers get really cold. I bet you could come up with a way you could turn motion, kinetic energy, into warmth and heat, thermal energy. There, I can feel it right now. As I start putting in kinetic energy, I can feel my hands heating up, turning that kinetic energy into thermal energy. There's three different kinds. What else could we turn kinetic energy into? Ooh, how about chemical energy, right? If you wanna run a few miles outside, you're gonna need some energy in your body to turn into that energy of motion. Why not eat some food which has lots of little chemical bonds, which your body is really good at breaking down and turning into the energy that we call kinetic energy. So you can run around. Here's another example, electric energy. Now, if you've ever seen a lightning storm, you definitely know there's a lot of energy out there in the weather patterns in our area. But what's a simple way I could turn kinetic energy into electric energy? Well, especially in these really cold, dry days. If you've ever scuffed your shoes across the carpet and then you reach out and try to touch those metal doorknobs in your house, you feel that little zap of static electricity. That's turning one type of energy, the motion of your feet scuffing on the floor, into a little bit of electric energy. And it might hurt a little bit, but you can feel that conversion from one type of energy to another. I've got one last one for you. For this one, I've got a little bit of a demonstration. If you like to sing or play an instrument or just talk and make sounds, you are producing acoustic energy. Here's one way I have of turning kinetic energy of motion into the acoustic energy, the sound energy. This is just an ordinary aluminum bar. And I've put a little powder on my fingers to make my fingers just the right amount of sticky. What do you think is going to happen if I just run my fingers along this bar a few times? Well, let's see what happens. Just to warn you, you may want to have your hand on the volume button when I do this demonstration. Here we go. It's going to take a few seconds, so keep listening. Whew, that got loud at the end. <laughs> That's one way of turning kinetic energy of motion into sound energy. I am wiggling this bar 
to make the sound, the air particles in the room, wiggle against my ear and produce sound or acoustic energy. Okay, so these are lots of different types of energy. I think it's about time that we show you how to turn some good old potential stored up energy into kinetic energy and maybe make a Cupid's bow and arrow. Yes, so that's what we are going to be doing. Excellent. So everybody has a packet. So let's see what's okay. inside your packet. Right. So we should have five craft sticks, which look like large popsicle sticks. Right. So you have one regular popsicle stick. Right. You should have five small rubber bands and then one really thick rubber band. You should have a roll of tape. You should have your Nerf dart and a clothes pin. Perfect. And just to make this work a little better this week, you may also want to bring your own scotch tape or adhesive tape from home. That will come in very handy if you're gonna use this bow and arrow for a while. That tougher tape will help hold this together. Yes. Also, we found that there is maybe one more thing you might wanna find. If you or anyone in your family has a little twisty tie, like you find on the loaves of bread that you bring home from the grocery store, this might come in handy at the very end. But it's okay if you don't have one of these, you can still make a good bow and arrow. You have, right? All right, so ready to get started. So first you're gonna take three of your craft sticks and you're going to stack them on top of each other, just like that. And then once you have them stacked together, then you want to tape them together, okay? And you want to make sure that you pull the tape tight. So of course you got this nice pretty tape inside of your box, but it does not hold as well. So I'm just gonna use my scotch tape here in order to get them and let them hold together pretty good and get it nice and tight. Okay, and just in case nobody has scotch tape around, Go ahead and use this tape. I'm just gonna make sure every time I wrap it a few times and pull it nice and tight so that when I finally do cut this tape, it'll help really hold these sticks together. There we go, wrapped a few times, press that tape down nice and firmly. Now I have a stack of three sticks. Yes. All right, Thanks. next, you're gonna take a fourth one and you're gonna push it up about an inch from the top and then you're going to tape it to the other three and again you want to wrap that tape around nice and tight all right i got some fancy tape this time look at that nice that and zebra green. stripes mm. <laughs> in green <laughs> i think this is from a very sick zebra <laughs> Mr. Kruger has all the fancy tape. He always gets the good tape. It doesn't matter. He uh, always uh, gets the good tape. Fancy tape. All right. All right. So now you should be looking something like this. It's about an inch from the top, so that's good right there. All right. So now you're going to take your small popsicle stick and you're going to put it across the other four like this, and now you're gonna use your rubber bands to hold it in place. So you wanna get one of your small rubber bands, okay? And you're gonna open it with your pointer finger, right, and your thumb like this, and you're gonna come across. Over, but under the popsicle stick. And I'm just gonna use my thumb to hold it, and then I'm going to twist it, and go back over. It usually wraps about at least four times. And when you finish, it's gonna be a little crooked, but it's okay, because it's up there. All right. All right, All right Mr. Kruger. He's getting it. Right. He's getting it. Getting a diagonally across the middle of this. Does that look about right? It does. It's a little crooked, it's okay. okay. It's wiggly. All right, so now we're going to get another rubber band, right? Again, open it between your pointer finger and your thumb. And now you're going to wrap it the opposite way. So I'm going to pull okay. this down. And of course, that rubber band is pulling back. But we're going to go the opposite way. And now when you do this, 
is going to cause it to straighten out. Okay. And again, we're going to wrap it about four times over and under in the opposite direction. And now we have it. Now it's straight. Okay. Oh, man. Whoop. My rubber band just went flying. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> if you do, it's okay. All right. I think this one looks better. Hey, all right. All right. I made a little X of rubber bands. Is that yes. right? Yes. That is correct. Okay. We do have a little X up there. All right. Okay. So now you're going to take your fourth popsicle stick. Or fifth popsicle. Oh, your fifth. Yeah. Yes, that is our fifth one. Our fifth popsicle go. stick. And you're going to put it on the top. And then you want to tape it down with the tape to the other four. So now it looks like this. Okay. And I just got to tape it down. And it's okay, you got that space in between. It should be because that popsicle stick is in there and those rubber bands. So that's fine, okay? All right. Give this a nice big wrap. Lots of layers of tape. Make sure you pull it tight so that it stays together and they stay lined up. All right, does that look about right? That looks great. <laughs> And just for strength, I'm going to give it one loop of good old scotch adhesive tape just to make sure everything stays together. All right. Um, next, All right. we are going to put our clothes pin on the end, the opposite end of where it opens. So we put your clothes pin on the other end, and you're going to use your thick rubber band in order to be able to hold that on. All right. You want to make sure that you put the rubber band over the middle. You want to put the rubber band over the middle. You don't want to put it on the end because it's going to leave your clothespin open. And you don't want to put it over the front of it because your clothespin won't open. Okay. So you want to put it on the middle. And you're just going to wrap it around a couple times until you get it nice and tight. I did mine three times. I don't want to break my rubber band, even though it's nice and thick. So, and that's what we have so far. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Got it. Kruger's working it out. <laughs> I now the I finishing product by connecting your last three rubber bands. So those last three, we're going to make a chain. All right. All right. Now. I can make the chain and it's wonderful, but Mr. Kruger can explain the chain. I just do it and it works. Oh, Miss Price has a great method too. <laughs> Here's how Mr. Kruger likes to make a chain of rubber bands. I'm going to take one of my rubber bands and just sort of thread it through the middle of another rubber band. So see how I've got one hanging down in the middle? And now with the two ends of the rubber band I'm holding, I'm going to pinch one and poke it through the hole of the other. And then when I pull that through, when I pull tightly, I should have two linked rubber bands. Now, that's a chain of two rubber bands. We're gonna have to do this again to make a chain of three. So watch it again. I'm gonna take my free rubber band, slip it through the hole in one of these guys on the chain. There we go. I'm going to pinch one side and poke it in through the other side. <laughs> Let me try that again. All right. There we go. I'm going to take one of these sides and poke it through the hole on the other side. And then pull. There we go. Now we should have a chain of three rubber bands. Voila. All right, so now that we have our chain of rubber bands, now we are going to connect them to our Cupid bow. All right. Okay. So you're going to take one end and you are going to wrap it around to get it nice and tight. You want to move it in about half an inch 
and you want to wrap it around until you get to the first knot in your rubber band in your chain right. and it'll stay i promise you it'll stay So that's what I'm looking like so far in my first one. And then you're gonna move it over the other end to the other side, and you're gonna wrap that around nice and tight until you get to the knot in that link on that side. Okay. Make sure you push it in about a half an inch. All right, and you should have some slack in it. Okay. All right, looking so, pretty good. So when I'm done, I should have what looks like a little chain across the front of this uh, sort of cross piece. Is that right? Yes. All right. So, so this gotta... is how mine is looking so far. I'm done. I've wrapped around on both sides. Make sure you can pull it back far enough that you can put it inside of the closed pin. So pinch the closed pin at the end. And put it in. Okay. So I've wrapped it on both sides, and you said there should be some enough some slack here mm -hmm, that you can pull okay. it down inside the clothes pin. Right. So squeeze it in Open the back. Open my clothes pin. Pull this down and let it pinch. Yep. Okay. That's it. Looking good. All right. All right. Inside of your packet, you have a dark sheet. So we can try to get some points. Right. All right. So now you can play with everyone in your family. Everybody can take a turn trying to get some points. Okay. <laughs> if you hit the little teeny tart um, heart up here to talk, you get 10 points. Oh, um, that's a tricky one. Yeah. The medium <laughs> size one here is six. Well, a small one. The medium size is four. The big one is two. And there's another small one here that's eight points. Um, I'm gonna just say, um, <laughs> yeah, I've done it with my daughter and all. Uh, I got go. two points. There you go. Two points. You're on the board. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is tricky. These, are, these might take a little tweaking before we can aim them and get enough power out of them to start hitting all these targets. I think if you hit the piece of paper at all, you should get one point. Right there. <laughs> Once you have a working bow and arrow, you can see this one's loaded and ready to go. What do we do to fire these arrows? All right, so everybody got one Nerf dart. So wow. your Nerf dart is going to go in the front of your clothespin. But every time I put mine on, right, and then I would turn to go shoot, <laughs> it would roll off. So I ended up with it in my hand. So you know, you got to be careful. You got to be slow. So, Mr. Kruger, he's the science man. <laughs> so, he came up with an invention so that it will not fall off. That's right. I figured a twisty tie might come in handy. So, if you have one of these twisty ties somewhere around your house, I think a good thing to do is to just take that and put it right about the middle of your cross of all these popsicle sticks. And I'm just going to sort of twist it around here. Okay. Okay. You see how I've just twisted it kind of right at the middle of my uh, bow here. Now, if I flatten this down just a little bit, maybe make them uh, stand up a little bit like uh, kind of like goal posts on the football field. Now I have something that will keep my Nerf dart from rolling off the side. So you might have to play with it a little bit, figure out how far up the bow this twisty tie should go to keep this on and to keep your dart from tipping over. You can see if you put it too close to the clothespin, your dart tends to get a little top heavy. That's not gonna go anywhere. You're gonna have to try to put the twisty tie right underneath the head of the dart. And then it's gonna sit perfectly right on your bow, just like that. All right, I'm gonna load my bow. Pull this rubber band down, put my dart in there. Now I'm ready to win this contest. Here. <laughs> Remember, when you go to shoot, if you look at it, right, 
you see it's going to shoot up and out right and we want to make sure that when you aim you aim so it'll shoot up towards the paper because if you up too far you're going to miss the target completely okay that's true gotta take a little practice i think to figure so out so you're supposed to, to go to your wall right and right. then take 10 foot steps backward to get to your starting point okay so, so. we're going to see what happens all right so i'm Price i'm going to put mine to go. down a little bit See, I'm going to let it go. Mm. Not that I, I think you hit that galaxy right there. How many points <laughs> <do> that? <laughs> all right, all right. Mr. Kruger's going to try. I'm going to step back over here. Let's see. I haven't practiced this, but I feel I feel confident. I feel this is going to go well. Here we go. Three, two, one, fire. Oh, yeah, I hit the galaxy too. <laughs> Must all be all right. the gravity in that galaxy. And sometimes if it's not working like you want it, <laughs> you just need to um just try again. That's right. You might have to readjust some things the same way you did on a car if you did zoom zoom racing. Things weren't working well. Hey, just go back, work on some things, see if you can get it going. That's right. That's that's the science that we call engineering, right? Yes. You make something, but engineers are the ones who figure out how to tweak it. What can we change here that makes it work even better? For example, what if I slide this clothespin farther from the middle of the bow or closer to the middle of the bow? Will that have some bearing on how far this will go or how accurate this will shoot? Sure, we sure will, because we know about energy now. We know there are these springy rubber bands here. That's what we call potential energy, right? Storing up energy in these tense rubber bands. And then as soon as I want to turn that stored up potential energy into kinetic energy and make something move, I just have to release the rubber band. Oh, wow. Nailed it. Woo. Six points for Mr. Brewer, right. zero for Miss Price. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed tonight's STEM event for the month of February. Cupid's arrow. Have fun with your family, um, working with your um, arrows and playing the game. All right. Thank you so much for working with us tonight. We will see you next month in March for leaping leprechauns excellent all right until then enjoy your cupid's bow and arrow have a good night bye guys <laughs>